SnapTech IT is the expert go-to resource for all things CMMC. Education, certification, preparation, and ongoing managed IT. Manage, secure, grow. Check it out at snaptechit.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Danny Mantilla, and I will be your host. And here again, we have Carl Bickmore. Hello, Carl. How are you? Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. So we have an interesting topic today that a lot of people might not be too familiar with. So we are going to talk about SOC 2. So our first question is, what is SOC 2? Ah, uh, yes. Well, you know, if you know, you know, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, SOC 2 is, a, is an auditing standard, uh, Systems and Organizational Controls, I think is what the SOC stands for. Uh, and uh, there's different versions of it, uh, SOC 2 Type 1 and a Type 2, for instance, uh, are, are different audits that uh, any organization can go through. Uh, and it's about looking at your information security policies and ensuring that they're being followed uh, and that you have evidence that they're being audited. Um, and so this is a uh, independent third party uh, audit. It's oftentimes done by accounting firms with an audit specialty or just auditing organizations that have uh, you know, become uh, accredited to offer this certification. Uh, and the uh, the biggest difference between the, the SOC 2 Type 1 and the SOC 2 Type 2 is that the uh, Type 1 is kind of a snapshot of a point in time on like a single day, uh, whereas a Type 2 is over a period of time, so it has a lot more rigor to it. Uh, and so it's it's a lot to, it's a lot less effort to do an evidence gathering section for like just a specific point in time. Like for instance, our our auditing period is typically annual, and it's uh, you know they'll they'll uh, look at anything from January through November when we're typically conducting the audit. Sometime between October and November annually is when we do it. And so um, you know it was developed by the American Institute of uh, uh, Certified Public Accountants. You'll see a little seal on a SOC report that says A I C P A, and that's the organization. Um, and really any organization that stores customer data or has access to management of an IT could benefit from a SOC 2 type 2 audit. Uh, and so uh, it's a third party auditing standard. And, and to be perfectly frank, one that we've been doing uh, in our organizations uh, every year since 2014, but we don't see a lot of other folks that are spending the time and effort and money to get this audit done um, in, in our uh, peer group. And so it's something I feel like is, is kind of unique and something that anybody should understand and really any organization can get involved in to prove that they're following their pro policies and procedures and that they operate with a certain degree of cybersecurity and information security. And yet there's another question that someone could ask their MSP because that's, what, you know, people don't really know what to ask the MSP to if they know what they're talking about. So that's a good one. And especially if you're saying that you have it and a lot don't. Like the reality of it is, Dana, is I talk to companies all the time and they'll say, like, well, hey, why, why are you guys different than others? Um, and I say, well, you know, we'll all come in and tell you that we're good at security. Everybody has learned to say that now. Um, but, you know, we're not the only ones that do this, but we're one of the few that actually pay a third party independent that operates within a standards based organization. Very similar to the conversations we're having around CMMC, but uh, that, that would apply to our organization. Uh, and so we ha have this auditor come and they do a deep dive. They ask for all sorts of evidence. They do all sorts of inspection. They visit our multiple locations uh, and uh, they validate and verify we do what our policies say we're going to do uh, and then provide a report that we can provide out to potential customers. So it's uh, yeah, it is a good question. So if I come and say, hey, we're you know, we're doing OK with information security this area of focus. I have a third party audit to back that up rather than just, you know, my devilishly good looks. <laughs> That's like a certified financial statement and a non-certified financial statement. So yeah, exactly. Like one you could just, you know, whip out of uh, QuickBooks, no problem. Another one's been accountant reviewed and they put their professional name behind it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. All right. Perfect. Okay. So what is the difference between SOC 2 Type 2 and ISO 27001? Well, um, in this conversation, that kind of could seem like an odd question if you're not familiar, but ISO is, you know, an international standards organization and that applies, you know, obviously internationally and the, uh, they have several published standards for manufacturing and for cybersecurity and for 
all sorts of things. And the 27001 standard is specific to cybersecurity. And there's actually a significant amount of overlap between the things that you might inspect or be caring about between a SOC 2 Type 2 and a ISO 27001. I would say that ISO 27001 is more of a top-down af- uh, approach for managing security. Um, and SOC 2 is more focused on the how, like how are the policies being implemented? So in a 27001, it's really focused on policy and procedure um, and how management handles it. SOC 2 is going to dig in and say, give me evidence, show me this, is not only your policy, but how it's actually being implemented and and, uh, and and prove that it's being done as stated, you know. So it sounds like there's a little bit more detail required for the SOC 2. Yeah, yeah. You know, both are great standards, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, either one, anytime a company's paying a third party to come in and, and to audit them against either of these standards, they're both great. I feel like from our perspective, we feel the SOC 2 Type 2 has fit us better. Uh, you know, and it's a voluntary thing. Any of this is voluntary. There's no requirement to be an IT company. There's no requirement to be a managed service provider or managed security service. You can just start selling services. And so this is just something that we've sought to help keep us honest. Um, and we're finding that it's it's done well. Uh, and, you know, regardless of which standard you focus on, I think you do well. But for us, we felt like the SOC 2 Type 2 is going to do a better job of helping our customers and our potential customers understand how we actually behave and operate regarding data security and cybersecurity management. Well, I think it's quite a, a badge of honor that uh, is very good to be pointing out to your customers. So that's that's good. Very yeah, good. We, we're grateful we've been able to do it, um, and it, it has helped us. And look, you know, every every year when those audits come, there's a lot of hours that's put into it. And it, you know, every year we have areas that we could find that we can be better. So you know, we do very well on our audits, but nonetheless, nobody's perfect, and we're happy to be constantly looking at that and finding ways to improve. That's the right attitude to have, that's for sure. Okay, so how does being SOC 2 Type 2 compliance play into CMMC? Well, the two are not directly directly related at all, but I will tell you this, as an organization that has you know, several years under our belt of having a third-party audit come in and review our information security policies and procedures and validate that we're actually doing it and provide evidence, the mechanisms are very similar. And the overlap of the controls is actually very close. And so um, I would say that organizations that have a SOC 2 Type 2, if they're now becoming CMMC-focused organizations like a registered provider organization, RPO like SnapTech IT is, um, it's kind of nice because it feels pretty familiar to us. The list of controls are very similar uh, to the list of controls we have in our policies already that are getting validated by our SOC 2. Uh, and so for us, it's not a big leap at all. We feel very prepared for a CMMC audit when the time comes for us to become audited, um, which of course will help us be able to go to our customers who need to reach a CMMC level uh, and their audit to know that their IT provider is also being regularly through party audited with accredited pr- people and well prepared for a CMMC audit when the time comes for that. And so, you know, look, it, it's uh, it just means that we're well versed in the process. It's a very similar style. Um, a lot of the controls are overlapped. Um, and, you know, it's an additional layer of uh, validation that you can use because uh, I expect that as an organization, we will be both SOC 2 Type 2 audited and CMMC accredited, um, you know, when the, t- like I said, when the time comes for that. But so, you know, the MSPs or IT providers that have spent the time to do this are going to find jumping into like a level three um, uh, CMMC audit, not, not too foreign, not too difficult. I mean, there's a lot of work, but it's not going to be a lot of extra work from what they're already doing. Well, and I think these are very good differentiators because I hate to say this, but I think a lot of people are going to try to jump into this whole CMMC thing and maybe not be qualified to be bringing a company that is is not currently, you know, compliant with even the state 171 to bring them to a level where an assessor is going to come in. And there are companies such as yours that are qualified to do that. So these differentiators are very important for you know, some of the organizations seeking certification to be asking their MSP, you know, are you qualified to do this? What is separating you from everybody else? And uh, I think this is, these are good little shining points. So that's Yeah, good. I mean, if nothing else, has the MSP ever had a practice of even being third party audited period against any standard? Mm-hmm. The answer for 
seven percent is no. Uh, they never have been. Um, they may have helped other customers through it, but they never had their own practices. And look, this is a CMMC is about supply chain. You know that you, not only do the prime subcontractors need to make sure that their subcontractors are in good shape, but their IT provider also needs to be in good shape because we're in that ecosystem as well. And so, um, you know, having experience and practice with doing third party auditing and and having someone come in and inspect you at that level and the, the financial and, and time investment, it's it's uh, it's a big leg up in the process. Yeah. So everybody out there that's looking for somebody to help them with certification, these are good things to be uh, taking note on. All right, so are SOC 2 Type 2 certified better prepared to achieve success in all levels of CMMC? Well, sure. I mean, look, there are some really specific things that CMMC has around, say, like, you have to pay attention to the DFARS controls that, that are into the control set. And there are things really specific about federal contract information and controlled unclassified information that are not necessarily specific to uh, a SOC 2 type 2, unless it's written into your policy because they're going to inspect your policies to say that you're following it. That being said, um, there are, uh, you know, some nuances and some difference. So the two don't 100% overlap. They just have significantly simil significant similarities. Um, and, you know, so uh, look, if you're an organization seeking certification and you know you need to be CMMC, probably just go straight to CMMC. But, uh, you know, look, if you haven't been doing it before, completing SOC 2s or, or other ISO certifications is probably a good thing for your organization until then. And then maybe at some point you'll have both, right? Uh, and that's kind of where we're looking is, is that we're going to have both. And I, I think it does, uh, you know, it's a good, it's a good preparation and it's, it's good to already have that motion in place. And, you know, they're following standards. So standards are, are a good thing to get into the habit of, which we're trying to create the culture in, in anything cybersecurity related. So, okay. Let's see here now. So what process does SnapTech IT go through to secure SOC 2 Type 2 compliance every year? What do you do every year? Oh, yeah. Well, so, you know, uh, we hire, a, a, you know, an accredited firm to, uh, you know, conduct our audit on an annual basis. We typically engage them sometime in September and we look to get on their schedule in the October, November timeframe so that hopefully, you know, the whole process is finished and the report is written sometime in early January for the, the previous year. And so we are actually this week, in fact, um, we have the auditors on site at two of our locations uh, meeting with our team in both Atlanta and also our Phoenix office. Uh, and uh, so we, uh, we, we get the auditors lined up. Um, we set up a team lead in our own organization to, uh, to be the project manager of it and that they uh, reach out to other people in our organization because there, there's it's not just paying for the auditor to come and the auditor to write the report. There's a lot of hours involved in gathering the evidence that's required and answering a very lengthy questionnaire. And it, so it's on an annual basis. It's quite a bit of effort uh, that we do. We put into it both uh, labor and financially. So uh, once once we get into involved in the conversation, we agree on the scope. Um, there's a gap analysis that's conducted. Uh, then we begin planning uh, for the actual audit itself. We go through testing the controls. Many of our controls we're testing year round anyway. And so it's just about showing them the evidence of our testing uh, because our policies around our controls, some of them are checked weekly, daily, monthly, quarterly. Some are only annual, depends on the controls. Um, and then once testing is complete, you know, the auditor uh, will issue a, an opinion based on the description and based on the evidence that they have been provided and based on their on-site visits. Uh, and so uh, I, I think, you know, what the very first time you do it, it takes a lot more time. I would say probably 200, 200 uh, man hours, as you say, uh, to do conduct a SOC audit. And I would say it's about half that every year after that, if you don't have gaps and you just keep, kind of keep going through the process. And so we, we put something in that area of time into it on an annual basis. And then the, uh, you know, the, the, the cost of the auditors, you know, goes anywhere from 30,000 to a hundred thousand um, dollars. And on the renewals, I just, once again, the first one's going to cost you more because you're establishing a relationship. It's the first time you're answering the questions. They oftentimes have tools that can make it easier on the, the repeat or the, the following years. And so we found that, um, you know, it's not as expensive after the first one as we've continued to maintain it. 
but you know, you could probably, if you're a small MSP and you're looking to do it, you know, I would budget 30 grand for it in cost to the auditor and then one to 200 hours, depending on where you're at in your own journey. Okay. I mean, that makes sense too, that it's going to take longer the first time, right? It's like, it's like anything the first time you're setting something up. Well, you're going to have policies and things that you didn't think about that are going to be pointed out that are going to be uh, and there's going to be process that has to be created. I mean, the first time you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then then it becomes uh, more obvious as you go and you're more prepared and you can answer things quicker and you can have better answers mm -hmm. as you as you go each year. Good stuff. Good stuff here. Okay. So, well, I think we just talked about this. What does it typically cost? You just said around $30,000 yeah. would be for a small. Yep, for a small MSP, you know, they can easily be $100,000 for the audit too. Depends on your organization mm -hmm. uh, and, and how much information, how many places they have to go and all that. So, all right. Okay. So what should subcontractors, this is one thing we don't usually talk about, subcontractors keep in mind about SOC 2 type 2 certification and CMMC audits. Well, I think, you know, if you're thinking about how to get yourself uh, CMMC ready, you uh, we've talked a lot in the past about the value of working with a registered provider organization, which is critical. I would say another great question to be asking of anybody you're potentially looking to have help you with IT in general uh, or IT as it relates to CMMC readiness is, are they uh, uh, a, a third party audited organization? Um, and a very common one for an IT provider to be uh, obtained is the SOC 2 type 2. Uh, and so uh, it, it should be a filter that you use when you are looking for uh, somebody to help you with that process. It just demonstrates the level of expertise and you have a third party opinion based on their claims. Uh, and that's just a better way to proceed from a due diligence standpoint. Uh, and so being an RPO and SOC 2 type 2, um, you can have have a degree of confidence that they've been checked, verified, vetted, understand, and that they have also uh, the claims they make around security and their own preparedness have been verified. Yeah, because you not you have your your background check, so you're going to find any dirt there also, and then you know third party coming in that's their opinion that they're saying of what you're doing, so it's another box to check off. So that's everybody good. makes claims. How many can back it up with objective <laughs> third party uh, data, right? Yeah, very good point. Well, this was really good information because I think a lot of people have questions about this stuff and you did an excellent job explaining it to us in terms we could all understand. So thank you very much for that, Carl. Yeah, no problem. Glad, glad to talk. Uh, yes, sounds great. Anything else you want to throw out there before we go? No, well, you know, uh, if you do have questions, we actually have a section on our website for it, snaptechit.com slash resources, where we talk about CMMC and SOC 2. Um, so you can you can go there for more information if you're interested. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very, very much. All well, right, thank you, care. Carl. And thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. And we appreciate your time. And hopefully this was helpful. And we hope to see you on the next episode. Take care. Take care.